everybody. We're going to have a good time in the presence of the Lord. We are tonight going on to our next teaching of the end time army, the Lord's army. And tonight we talk about the cross and the glory and the divine nature. Um, to be a real end time warrior for Jesus, you need to understand the power of the cross of Christ. There is no other message in Christianity than the message of the cross of Jesus Christ. There is no other way of salvation. There's only one way of salvation. No matter where you are in the world, there's only one way. One way, Jesus. Amen. Yeah, there's only one way. Why? Because no one came from heaven but Jesus Christ. Only God can save you with His blood to change you from a sinner to a saint. There's no other way, no other religion has what we have in Christianity. You go to the, the grave of Buddha. He's still in the grave. You go to the grave of Muhammad. He's still in the grave. You can go to the, the grave of Hare Krishna. He's still in the grave. But you go to Jerusalem. And you go to the grave of Jesus Christ. I'm telling you, it is empty. It is empty. Why? Because He is risen. Amen. It's impossible for God to stay dead. Because He is alive. And He is alive forevermore. He died in order to take the keys of hell back from Satan so that you could go to heaven. Because these are the keys that open heaven. And those keys are here because of Jesus who died for you to save you. From what? From God's judgment, which is hellfire. From your own fallen nature. From the power of sin over you. Now many of us come out of a deep dark place in our life. And so... You might be on, been on drugs, you might be been on, an alcoholic, you might have been onto all kinds of sin. And I'm telling you, sin has power. I was bound by the power of sin. And I had even become a Christian in a Baptist church. I was born again, baptized, but the power of sin was strong and pulled me back. Until I was baptized with the Holy Ghost and fire, that is when a lot of darkness snapped off. That is when I felt I got the power over sin through the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, because of Jesus' blood and the power in the blood, it gave me the power to the Holy Spirit to overcome sin in my life. And that is the power of the message of Christ. Amen. So there is no other message. And so for us, now we're coming towards the last period in this age. Yeah? Jesus is coming back soon. Before He comes back, there's a seven-year period. And we're getting close to that time. And the Lord is raising up His end-time army. This is the army of the Lord. And you are called to be part of it. Amen. 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 You are called to be part of it. And so in order for us to be powerful in the last days in Christ, that Christ is powerful through you, you need to understand the message of the cross. Why? Because there is no other message. And this is what Apostle Paul said. For I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Everybody say crucified. Yeah. Jesus was crucified and it says that on the cross He defeated Satan. He defeated the power of sin and death and hell on the cross. He triumphed over, over it. Amen. Amen. And so, and then the resurrection came after three days and He was alive. And then we have ascension. That is when Jesus ascended and He was seated on the right hand of the Father. 
the apostles were around with Jesus and Jesus said go out into all the world and preach the gospel as a, and as he was talking to them he ascended to heaven he ascended and it says that he sat on that day on the right hand of the father to do what to intercede for us he's praying for us he's our high priest in heaven but he's also in us through the Holy Spirit and so Apostle Paul says this and this is the church has strayed away from what Apostle Paul says from what Jesus Christ has done on the cross Apostle Paul says there is no other message there's no other message yeah for I determined not to know anything else but Jesus Christ and him crucified amen, amen. so tonight we are doing this message but the next time when I'm here, we're going to go to the school of crossfire evangelism. And we're going to do the whole course here on Sunday nights. Yeah? And so people are watching. There's, it's going to be that. And it's, you can get the material already online. Because we need to be trained. For what? For the coming move of God. So one day I was worshiping, and I was worshiping. The Lord came above me. I felt the fear of God above me. Jesus came right above me as I was worshiping. And he started to speak to me. And he said, Nicholas, the move, the end time move is coming. It's coming. But he said, you need to have the right message. And he was not just speaking to me. He was speaking to the body of Christ. Because I had written already a book about the cross, according to... <coughs> what God said before to me but now he said the move is coming the end time revival is coming but they need to have the right message and the right there is no other message but many Christians have strayed away from it many preachers have strayed away from it well Apostle Paul says I do not know anything else but Jesus Christ and him crucified yeah. so if we stray away from it we are straying away from what from the Christian foundation yeah because Apostle Paul also says there is no other other foundation that anyone can lay but than Jesus Christ there is no other foundation you can have another religion but your religion is not going to save you there's only one way to heaven that's Jesus Christ amen, amen. hallelujah and you guys have to get forward fire because you have to be sharing this on the streets Amen. Amen. So 1 Corinthians 1, it says, For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. You see that? The message of the cross is the power of God. It releases the power of God in your life. And there is power in the blood. And there is power to the blood in the Holy Ghost to do what? To overcome sin. To overcome strongholds, to overcome bondages, to overcome drugs, to overcome porn, or to overcome alcohol, to overcome greed for money. It, that's power in Jesus. Why? Because He's God. And when you have Him in you, it says that greater is He that's in you than that He that's in the world. Amen? Amen. Now, I've been watching some good stuff of life. And it's about people who have died, like this lady, she died in childbirth. So, it was, so something happened, and she left her body, and she went up, and she was a Christian, and she came by the gates of heaven, and she met the Lord there. And the Lord showed her things. And then, it was, she said, I was standing by a canyon, on one side was heaven but then there was this big cave yeah like the Grand Canyon I've, I've been in a Grand Canyon it's amazing but it's it's like a big big Canyon and you can see from one side to the other by the Grand Canyon in Arizona in America and and this is what like what she saw and she said she saw on the other side people coming from the earth by on the other side of the Canyon and one after another fell into the canyon, into the flames. One after another, one after another, they <laughs> fell and they went to 
the flames. And then on her side, she saw some people coming and they were going into the gates of heaven. And then Jesus talked to her. She said, oh, Lord Jesus, I just gave birth to a baby. Can I go back to look after my baby? And the Lord said, yes, you go back. And the Lord let her come back to life. So there's one story. Now another story. This is man. He's a Hindu. He was a Hindu. And he was a businessman. He was a lot in China. And he got a sickness. And at once he died. And as he died, he went up to, towards heaven, towards the light of God. And he was standing on a plateau similar to this lady. And then he saw the bright light. And the bright light started to talk to him. And he said, Lord, who are you? Lord, who are you? And the Lord talked to him. Now, this is a Hindu man from another religion. I've been in India. I've spoken to Hindus. I've, God has used me to preach to Hindus. They have another religion. And this man was in that religion. And he stood there. And he saw the gates of heaven. But they were closed. And there was one little gate. And the Lord spoke to him. And he said, I am going to send you back. And you will find out the way. And he saw this one little gate. There was a little gate. And so he saw these things. And the Lord sent him back. Because the Lord knew he was going to find him. So he saw all these heavenly things. And this, when he was back to life, the Lord said, I want you to read the Bible. This is a man from another religion. Wow, amazing. This man saw the, the glory of God, but he was not allowed to go into the city. Why? Because he was not born again. He was not following Jesus. He was not on a narrow gate, uh, on a narrow way. So he couldn't go to the narrow gate. So what happened after some time, the daughter of him, who was also a Hindu, was asked to come and sing in a choir in a church. And it was Passover, or Easter in English. And so the preacher preached the message. And where did he talk about? He talked about the narrow gate. And the man was amazed. He thought, that's what I saw. I saw the narrow gate. And the preacher preached, you cannot go into heaven unless you go to the narrow gate. That day he understood who the Lord was, the Lord Jesus Christ. And he knew that then that Jesus Christ was the narrow gate and that he had to give his life to Jesus. And he gave his life to Jesus. He was a Hindu man. And he was taken towards the gates of heaven. So... Abraham didn't save him. Ganesh didn't save him, which is the elephant god. Yeah. In the, in the Hindu religion, they have Ganesh, and they say he is in heaven, and he let the river come, and, and you can wash yourself in his river. And that is why they have the, the Ganges River in India, and all these people go into the water because they think that water can wash them. That is why, why you see on TV in northern India, all these people go in to wash because they think that water can wash them because one of the gods is Ganesh. But now he saw that Ganesh could not save him. Ganesh would not take him through the narrow gate because Ganesh didn't give his life for him. Ganesh is a lesser god. He is not a God at all. You need Jesus Christ who is God to save you. Amen. Amen. And so this Hindu man, he became a Christian. Why? Because he wanted to be in heaven one day with the Lord. And now we start to share to the other Hindus about Jesus Christ. That's why I said there's no, no other religion that can save you. Because only God came to us through Christ. Amen. There's only one way to be saved, and that's through Jesus Christ. And that is why we need to understand the power of the cross. Yeah? We need to be preachers of the cross. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you want to be an end of soul, you need to understand the message of the cross of Christ. If you don't understand it, you will not stand for the onslaughts that are coming. Because only the power of the blood of Jesus Christ will make you that you are an overcomer. It's only the blood of Jesus that will overcome the demons. Satan powers, the witchcraft powers. Jesus is Lord. There is no other Lord than Jesus Christ that can save you. And so we need to be carriers of the cross. Amen. You need to learn to be a carrier of the cross of Christ. So that you pick up your cross and follow him. Hallelujah. So I'm passionate about it. Why? Because I carry the, in my heart the burden for the lost souls. I mean that girl, that lady who died. She saw all these people falling. And then I think, Lord, all these people are going to hell. We need to bring the message of Christ. Yeah, I weep about that. I, I, I cry about that. That people are going to hell. Because that's horrible. But we are messengers. You are a messenger. So you cannot afford to go back to drugs. You cannot afford because people are getting lost. And you are called to win them. Because you have a testimony. Amen. Corey, Amen. you have a testimony. And God wants to use you. No matter where you come from. God loves every one of us here. But in order for us to make it, we need to let the cross work in us. It's not enough to have a ministry. You will see people have a ministry fall away. Why? Because they let, didn't let the cross of Christ go deep in their heart. Because the cross of Christ has to bring brokenness in us. What do you mean, Nicholas? The cross is God's love for us. What Jesus did is His love for you. He is the Almighty God. Do you know that the angels say, Holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Amen. Jesus Christ is the Lord God Almighty. And the Lord God Almighty died on the cross and went to hell for you. And Almighty means He's all powerful. So the almost, the most powerful God, He died for you to save you. And the Almighty means in Hebrew also the all-sufficient one. The word Almighty, that's where we have the name El Shaddai from. Brandman loves to sing El Shaddai. See, that is the Almighty. But He is also a caring Father, a loving God. And God wants to show you by revelations the power of the cross how it can melt your heart when you're hurting, when you have pain in your heart. Many of us has, have so much pain in the heart. That's why we went to drugs. That's why we went to alcohol. That's why we went to porn. Why? Because we were empty. We didn't feel that love from a father or a mother the way it should have been. So we have that emptiness in us. So you can even become a preacher. There's been preachers here in this ministry who had been preachers got them onto drugs and fell away that I've taught them here in this ministry so being a preacher is not enough it's not Jesus didn't say worship no he said be a preacher for the father no he said worship the father in spirit and in truth so the matter of us is this, to be a worshiper. To love God with all our hearts, with all our soul, and everything that's in us. And out of that we worship Him. But because there's a lot of hardness and pain in the heart, we need the power of the cross go in there. That you see, wow, this loving Jesus, He was bleeding for me. He was being whipped for me. 
then put the nails to his hand for me because he loves me so much. Jesus would just die for you. If no one else would get saved but you, he would still die for you. Amen. That's how much he loves every individual in this room. And we need that love to go deep, so deep. See, God has taught me to be weak. I'm a strong guy, yeah? But God has allowed me in this journey as a believer for 37 years to become weak. Why? Because God knew there was so much pain in me. And if God put too much burden on me, I would not make it. Because God knew that only the love of Jesus would carry me through life, to being a father, a husband, a leader, only His love. And that is why the cross has to go so deep in us that it melts every hurt in your life. Everywhere you have pain, the, the power of the love that Jesus showed to us on the cross has to go to, into every hurt of us. Because where there is pain, many times there's also a demon. Yeah? And so God needs to deliver us. He's delivered me from so much darkness, so many evil spirits, as I allow Him to go deeper in my heart. And because of that, our marriage has become stronger and stronger. And then, out of that, His fruit grow in me. And that's what the Lord wants to do in you, that His fruit grows in you. And so God wants to bring this brokenness in us, especially now we're in this last day. And the book of Joel talks about the Lord's army, and it talks also about this day. And Joel 2 talks about this army being burned off, the northern army. And the Lord gave me a vision of that in, in 1992. And, and, and God said, Nicholas, have you ever smelled burnt flesh? And I said, no. And then I saw this vision of this northern army being burned off with fire. And I was shocked and I was crying. And then I found it here in the book of Joel. And it is there talking about different moments in time, but it's also talking about the moment for us, because it's talking there about the Third World War. And what we are seeing right now in Ukraine is the beginning of where it's talking about. Because that, that, that Northern Army is, is Russia. And so we are in the day where Joel was talking about. And then, and then Joel said, this northern army is coming. And we're seeing it. And Russia will take more nations. Why? Because that's in the book of Ezekiel. You'll see Russia taking more nations. They've already taken some nations back. So Putin thinks he's like Alexander. No, he's, he thinks he's like Tsar Peter the Great. Tsar Peter the Great took Russia and make it as a very big country in the 15th or 16th century. And, and Putin is under that spirit. And, and then we see it in Ezekiel, all these nations joining to Russia. Yeah? And so we are seeing now places being bombed and destroyed. And that's a precursor for what's to come. But the good news is this, that God wants to come with mighty revival before all this trouble happens. And it says this, that, And the Lord shall utter His voice before His army. This is Joel 2, verse 11. And then I go to 12. Therefore also now said the Lord, Turn you unto me with all your heart, and with fasting, and with weeping, and mourning. And rent your heart, and not your garment. And turn unto the Lord your God. For he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and of great kindness, and repentant him of the evil. So here we see again the heart of God, the heart of love. That God is a loving God. God is seeing the suffering of the people in the Ukraine, and He's hearing their prayers. And, and so God will do things. But for us, we need to let this word of Joel come to us. It says, now come to God with weeping, with brokenness. And see, this is the hard word for Australia. 
What I've learned in Australia that many men don't like to weep. Many ministers, they want to minister. But how many wants to minister to the Lord? The first ministry of us is a ministry to the Lord. A worship, a love, pouring our hearts out to Him. That's our first ministry. And see, what I've seen in Australia, people want to be very busy. And they take that to the church, they want to run, they want to be busy. And, and we need to be busy about the busy, busyness of the Lord. But it has to come out of you being one with the Lord. Jesus said, abide in me and I in you. And you will bear much fruit. So it is about union. It's about oneness. Oneness with the Holy Spirit. Yeah? Yeah? And so we have gone to this COVID time. And we're in the aftermath of it. And a lot of stuff is going on what you don't know. Yeah? There's a lot of stuff. And there's a lot of people suffering now. Hospitals are full. And that is not because of COVID patients. Okay? And so there's all this stuff going on. And so people are weeping. And so we should not need to come in that place of being broken by the situation. We should come in a place of brokenness at the cross as we meditate upon what Jesus has done for us. So we are so full of love for God that we are so one with Him and we want to reach out because we are one with Him. And we know that He is good. And we know that He is kind. And we know that He is loving. And we know He is full of shalom. Full of healing. Full of power. Because we have been tarrying at the cross. And then we become one with Him. And we don't minister out of guilt. We not, don't minister out of drivenness. We minister out of the rest. The rest of Jesus. See, when I was a first believer, I was very driven. I wanted to evangelize the whole time. And then God slowed me down. Why? He wanted to work in my heart. To make me, to heal where I was hurting, where I was broken. So that in my marriage, I mean me, we could be strong. I started a small church in the Netherlands. And I thought, wow, we're going to reach the whole town. We're going to evangelize. We're going to go for it. The Lord said, No. I want you to spend time with me. And I thought, whoa, this is weird. Where did that voice come from? But it was the voice of the Lord. Because the Lord wanted to make Amy and me one. So we would have a strong marriage. Because, you know, you cannot just be a Christian and a minister and jump from one woman to another woman. That's what's happening today. That's what's happening. And they're, they're leaving the lie. What I, what I believed in the days of Noah, you know, in the days of Noah, it said that they were marrying and remarrying. And I, I never totally got it. Now I do. Because people are just, even pastors, they just jump from one wife to another to another. But the Bible says that God hates divorce. That is what the scripture says. But preachers don't want to say that. See, this is where we need the fear of the Lord. Because we can say, oh yeah, this one is going to heaven. Yeah, that one is go going to go to heaven. But I'm telling you, that gate is narrow. It's a narrow gate. And it's a narrow way. The broad road leads to destruction. See, I went from girlfriend to girlfriend when I was a sinner. And I've repented. I stayed single for six years until God put Amy and me together. Because I knew God was holy. If I want to follow God, I have to be holy. And therefore God worked in me. God warned me when we were just married. Don't run after a big ministry. You're going to fall like that man and like that pastor. So God put the fear of God in me. Why? Because God knew the hurts that were in me. He knew that I needed to spend a lot of time in His presence whereby His glory would fill me, saturate me. You see, the drugs have a hold. Why? Because of pain, of hurt. And God is a loving God. He is a caring God. He is a caring Father. So He wants to heal you. Amen? Amen. 
He wants to heal you to make your spirit strong so you can stand in the days of temptation. Amen. And the end time army is an army who's going to look like Jesus. So that means they know the Father. Because it says Jesus was in the bosom of the Father. He knew the Father from heart to heart. They were one. And the end time army is called to be one with the Father. Amen. Because they spent time in the glory. You see? And God is going to visit the earth in a mighty way. But visitation is not enough. Revival is not enough. You need to become a dwelling place of the glory of God. Amen. So that in a hard time you can walk with the Lord. And in a time of revival you can walk with the Lord. Amen. But you have to become a dwelling place of the Lord in a hard time. Even now. Amen. Amen. And out of that. You have to see that the fruit of the Spirit grow in your life. So that the day star arises in your heart. The day star is full of love, is full of light, is full of glory, is compassionate. And the day star, Jesus Christ, is full of divine nature and the full of divine life and full of divine power. Amen. 2 Peter 1. And out of that he sets the prisoners free. Because I have been set free from many demons and darkness and pain. That is why God has used me for some of you guys here. And God has set you free. Why? Because he did it with me. And now he's done it for you. And now you are called to do it and set others free. Amen. Amen. But the deepest thing is to let the cross go deep. There is no other message for the end time church. Because the Lord spoke to me in Toronto. That was in 2000, no, in 1994. He said, now is an outpouring of love. But the next revival is going to come out of a place of weeping. A place of weeping. See, this is a hard word. But the book of Joel, if you study the book of Joel, it's all about weeping and mourning. You see, what did COVID do? It showed us that we were in trouble. More trouble is coming. So you can learn to weep now and receive the love of God in a deep way. Or hard times will come and will make you weep. But God wants us now as believers to be in this place at the cross whereby we learn to be broken and intercede for the lost that they will be saved. And then in the hard times, we will be as a light and we will be able to reach out to the lost, to the dying, to the hurting. Why? Because we are full of light. We are full of love. We are full of glory. Because we tarry that across. Being saved is not enough. You need to learn to tarry at the cross daily and let the Lord change you from glory to glory. That is called progressive sanctification yeah you're saved that means that your position is you're a new creation you're made holy but then there's a progressive and that is why we need to press in at the cross of Christ amen, amen. Hallelujah. hallelujah praise the Lord let's all stand up And let's just close our eyes in the presence of the Lord. And just go to the Lord. It's, it says in Joel that, the, that God is good. He is kind. He's mercy. Merciful. He can give us time. He can give you time. But many of you are hurting in your heart. And that is where the blood has to come. Because some of you have fallen back. And some of you have fallen back several times. And the only way for you to become stable is to let the cross of Christ go there. The blood of Jesus, the love of Jesus, the kindness of Jesus. Only then you will become stable. Or is you're going to be an outside minister or Christian. That you look good on the outside, but you're on the inside you're not good. You're hurting, therefore you need to watch porn. You're hurting, therefore you need to go back to drugs. 
But the power of Jesus pours out the Holy Spirit in your life, whereby you are going to be saturated and you are compelled to love people. You're compelled to share about Christ because you have felt that love. And so now just open your hearts and, and if you're struggling with sin, just bring it to the Lord and ask Him to wash you with the blood of Jesus. And let the glory of the Holy Spirit come down upon you. Only that. If you were fatherless, if your father didn't show love, if your mother didn't show godly love, if you never knew a father or mother, it says that the, that God wants to be a father to the fatherless. He wants to be a father to you. Just start to receive that right now. As I speak, the Holy Spirit is moving on, on, on you guys. The Holy Spirit is moving tonight. Because God loves you so much. For God so loved the world that He poured out the Holy Spirit because the, the price was paid. Let that love just saturate you right now. Father, I just loosen your heavenly realm here, your angel, angelic realm. Lord, your heavenly realms of glory and healing and deliverance, that you start to heal the brokenhearted, Lord. That you touch them, that you set them free, that you make them soldiers of the Lord's army. Make them soldiers of the Lord's army, Lord. Just come upon them.